Jay, Jordan, both of you were talking before the show about how far this program has come, what Scott Drew has been able to do there. I don't know if everyone in the country knows this story. Obviously, people that are close to college basketball know about it, but just give us, you know, give us the highlights of really what this championship means to that school and that program. Well, I'll jump in real quick. Jordan said it the other day on our show, and I give him a lot of credit because I, I, I had known about it, but, you know, throughout the course of time, we just forget. He's like, this is the greatest rebuild mm -hmm. maybe in the history of sports. And it forced me. I was like, man, that's right. Like, I for a good call by JC because I forgot back in two, June 2003, guys, June 12th, there was a murder on Baylor's basketball team. Mm. Wow. Patrick Dennehy died. He got shot. He was shot by his teammate, Carlton Dotson, which wow. led to a basketball scandal at Baylor. Now, their head coach around that time was a guy named Dave Bliss. Uh, Dotson pleaded guilty to murder, was sentenced to 35 years. Uh, prison term, and then they started investigating the, the team for drug use, uh, for improper payment. Uh, sanctions pretty much crippled this team uh, until they had their first winning season in 2008, right? So Scott Drew comes on board, and, and, and JC, I know you have context <laughs> to this, but to, to be able to bounce back from something like that to get this team to where they are in 2021 speaks volumes about how Scott Drew has revamped this program and deserves so much praise. Yeah, Jay, and you laid it out beautifully. I mean, that that's beautifully how ugly it really was. I mean, you, you think about a circumstance like that at a university, and you think about, oh, that program has got to be extinct. And it was near that at Baylor. I mean, that was what was discussed. Dave Bliss, who was the head coach, not worthy of that title in one iota uh, in terms of the kind of guy he is and the kind of coach he was there. This guy tried to cover up what happened there a loss of life under under his tutelage, under his watch. And this man, all he cares about is protecting his job, Dave Bliss, who was then the coach at that time. They got that clown out of there, and then they brought in the right guy for the job, a guy who was committed uh, to the program. It wasn't a great opportunity, but it was an opportunity. And Scott Drew saw that if he was given some runway, he could make this thing work, and that's exactly what he did. That first year, he held open tryouts on campus for walk-ons wow. to try and field a team. Forget talent. Forget winning uh -huh. games. Let's just keep a team out there, much like we looked at college basketball this year. Like, we know there'll be attrition, but we need to play these games to save the sport. And that's what Baylor's mentality was after that awful scandal and tragedy, one of the worst in college sports. And they said, let's just get a team out there. Let's play the games. We'll lose by 20, 30, 40 every night. That's what happened. But then they started to build. And if you look at what they've done this last decade, they have been a team perennially winning 23, 24, 25 games. Heck, last year, with if there's no COVID, Jay, this team probably wins maybe the national championship last year. They were that yep. kind of good. So we talk about teams robbed of an opportunity. Uh, Scott Drew has engineered the best rebuild in the of sport to come back from extinction, what they were near back then in 2003, to becoming a constant team that is competing for championships in their conference and now getting over the hump with a national championship the model in front of them is nothing but success and the future looks very bright and it's because of that man scott drew well when you talk about their future so now they're at the mountaintop so now what next like how do they retain scott drew not let the uh parasites come after him throw money at him <laughs> what does this mean for his future and also there's what, is, what does it mean for Baylor, right? yeah, yeah what, not, but not what i'm saying the money yeah, right 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 money. but what i'm saying is what does it mean for the program as well i mean as far as recruiting uh, we we talk about gonzaga everybody's running out to gonzaga and how much resources they have mm -hmm. i mean at this point where does this put the program i think for, for baylor first of all let me start by this that that story that both jay and jc just told here it to me is just one of those where you're, you remember hearing about it mm -hmm. and then you go oh my god that's right that happened yeah. mm -hmm. and my next thing is the fact that he took that job and he stayed there as long as he has, and Bart <laughs> asked that question, you know, does he jump from here? Of course he doesn't because that's now, that, that job now, what does it mean to him? He yeah. built that thing all the way from scratch, literally from scratch. You don't often see that. It is, it is pretty incredible, pretty remarkable what he's done. Also, what Mark Few has done with Gonzaga. Let, let's not forget, of course, that they Hope. still have themselves Hope. a program that for the last 20-plus <laughs> years they have been a dominant team. It's just getting to that championship and winning it, getting to the mountaintop, as Bart put it, that has been, for, for Mark Few, the one elusive uh, goal that he just has still not been able to attain. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.